parce que comme je ne vous connais pas pour la, la retransmission vous êtes
Ramadan. Hello, hi, bonjour. Thank you for joining us uh, for this Doc Talk as part of the Can Docs 2021 program. Uh, we are very happy um, to once again, uh, after several years, of course, of close partnership with Vision du Réel, uh, our dear friends um, in Switzerland, um, to be collaborating again this year um, in different ways. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, Vision du Réel is hosting this panel conversation um, with Jean-Gabriel Perio here, uh, who has uh, his film um, in selection at the director's fortnight this year. Congratulations. Um, and um, I will not be much longer, but I would like to thank all our panelists today. Um, and Madeleine Robert, head of industry at will say a few more words just before we start. Merci encore tous les quatre. Thank you for joining us. À très bientôt. Good afternoon. Um, I have no much more to say. Uh, I just want also to thank Candox uh, and Pierre Alexis Chevit for uh, this partnership that we and with um, for many years right now. Um, I would like to introduce you uh, our panelists, and I want also to thank you very much to uh, to participate. It's very nice of you. So, in order, um, Marie-Ange Lecioni, uh, producer at uh, Les Films de Pierre, who is the producer of Retour à Reims, the film uh, by Jean-Gabriel um, that is uh, presented tomorrow in uh, the director's fortnight here in Cannes. Um, after, we have uh, Cécile Lestrade uh, from uh, the production company Alter Ego in France also. And uh, she will produce she is producing uh, the, the following uh, project by Jean-Gabriel that we had the pleasure to uh, present uh, in our pitch in Vision du Réel this year. Um, thank you, Cécile, also. And Jean-Gabriel Perriot, uh, film director, and, uh, but you will introduce yourself, so it will be nice. The session will be moderated by Rebecca De Pass, a member of uh, the selection committee in Vision du Réel. And uh, I'll let you the, the mic. <laughs> Thank you. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, also because we know how is uh, particular the day before the eve of a uh, world premiere. And once again, congratulations uh, for the film. Um, you have, uh, we are here to talk in specific uh, of that uh, Jean Gabriel is doing, uh, Jean Gabriel Perriot is doing uh, with the archive. It's uh, work that started uh, with your first films and he kept uh, all along your career. Uh, here, um, nevertheless, there is a big specificity. It's that uh, those images are linked to uh, a book uh, by Didier Eribon. I hope I spelled correctly the mm -hmm. name. Okay. Uh, so for me, it was very interesting to know uh, how did you relate uh, to this book uh, uh, when you were researching on the archival and how those two uh, part of the writing of the film were connected and interlaced. Yeah, the, the first step was to um, make an, an editing of the, um, the text of the book itself. So I, I drew some lines and I selected only a, a small part of, uh, from the book. And the game or the, the, the way to work with the archives, it's um, to succeed sometimes to, uh, oh, how to say it, um, the images and, and the, um, the footages have, have a different kind of uh, role or strategy. I, I use them differently regarding the text because in some part um, they are not an illustration of the text but they are done in the same time, they are given in the same time as the text so they, they are link uh, to them but it, it was um, for me complicated to not to try to not be only in the illustration 
as it could be done in historical uh, um, archive film, for example, but to try to find images that could, in a way, exist for themselves, whatever the text, and that the text could be here, whatever the, Im the, the images, that is, is not so easy. And uh, another um, way to work with archive was to find excerpts of, of films that could replace part of the text. So more I was editing, more I was um, reducing the text itself because it was uh, no more needed because I found some things that, that expressed the same thing that was expressed in the text. And the last strategy was to find pieces of more unexpected kind of uh, excerpt that could like open the space, uh, give some liberty or poetry, some, some little space, like, like some songs that are not 100% related, not to the text or to, to the topic itself, but just like give some kind of, yeah, uh, give us some time to breathe, to breathe before going uh, back to the text. When you first approached the book, uh, for you it was an evidence or it was something to work with the archive? Uh, it, it was like a, an instant decision or it's something that grow afterwards? Yes and no. Um, in fact, the, at the beginning of the story, uh, Marie-Ange uh, gave me a call and uh, asked me if I uh, agreed to adapt uh, the text with archives. And uh, in a way, it, it, it was uh, for me obvious to use archives, but it wasn't obvious to use only archives. So I shoot some material, some interview myself, but at the end I, I never edit them. So it's, it's fully archived now, but it, uh, there was a step that it was not so obvious. Uh, you, there is only one scene that is not archived. It's the, the, the beginning. beginning. It's the very beginning of the film. Mm. And uh, you are, uh, in a way, it's, um, it's, it's like a trampoline. It's like a launch pad for the film. We are not idea that uh, this is coming, that the next, uh, the next images are coming. And it's a very, in a way, anonymous street in which it uh, runs, it could be whatever other cities in France, and how do you decide to keep only this uh, uh, before the archive? I don't really know. Um, what is sure that I needed in, in the tradition some kind of space that was not fully the film itself, like an introduction that should be different because it's uh, re re regarding the text, the beginning of the book that I use as the beginning of the film is, is someone that expressed that he, he just go back to his uh, past, to his family. So he, it's done from, the, uh, from today, from the present time that go back to the past. So I just, in a way, respect that to have the images of today uh, France and go back to the past. And as uh, we did the shooting, we shoot those. Uh, images, but if I didn't uh, done the shooting, I would have used archives or something else. I had them so I can use them and at least get a little part of what we shoot. If there are questions. English, French? English. English, thank you. Okay, uh, so b main question is we need to clarify uh, what is the, what we mean archive. It means mm. my own archive that they do or working with the archives that is outside like public archives or state archives or television, whatever, because my archive uh, working, uh, I, I'm not see, uh, I not see the content for uh, one uh, one hour session, but uh, if we talk about the uh, working with the mm. big uh, archives, then there is a lot of question that arises, and that is good to be 
uh, define it or at least share some experience. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I, I use in my films in general different kind of archi archives. Uh, archival material, it could be photographs of uh, films uh, or raw footages. But uh, in this film in particular, it's mostly, I think, uh, excerpt of pre-existing uh, film from cinema, fiction film, TV documentary, uh, creative documentary, some uh, music video, uh, news from the TV. But it's, it's I think it's two thirds of TV material and one third of fiction film. So it, it's, um, yeah, it's uh, TV and, and, and films. From the uh, World War II to today. So I even use uh, contemporary uh, films as archival material. And um, you were about this, about the different nature of the images uh, that you were mentioning. Uh, how do you uh, put those uh, together or how you do you inter interconnect? Because uh, on one side, uh, we have uh, images that were in a way born to inform, uh, to, that were part of more or, uh, of a real language, of a real language. And on the other side, we have more, we have classic films, we have fiction films that on the other side, um, how can I say, contribute to give a, uh, like a collective narrative of what was working class and their struggles. So how did you connect those two kind of images? By the text. So, so the text, for the one we, uh, we don't know the text, it's a text that tells the story of the mother of the author and his grand, the grand parents and after the, his mother and, and the father. And I focus more on the women, so the grandmothers and the mother. So we go through almost the century uh, in the working class, uh, in a working class family, and uh, we cross different kind of topic, always linked to the life of the people of the worker and uh, and the life of the uh, female uh, worker. And um, so uh, the, the image is it's it's in a way different point of view from this life so it's uh, films from the inside so more like political filmmaker or experiences of worker doing films and it could be to the opposite it could be the the tv point of view on those people so mm -hmm. it's some kind of a uh, wide range of uh, way to represent one group of people mm -hmm. so the idea was to mix all them not to mix but uh, not to compare but to go to one to the other and um, the other thing is, I always respect um, the, the films for themselves. So in the film, we can clearly see when it's a fiction film, when it's a TV news, when it's a documentary. And it's important to, for the audience to know who is talking. Or to, uh, at least to have an idea that, oh, that is really clearly a fiction, so is there is something different. That is, is a TV reporter that is different than a documentary. Uh, filmmaker. So even if we don't know the filmmakers, we can know from where they are talking. Maybe we can play the first uh, ex expert of the film. De manifestation. Par la délégation à des responsables politiques dont on acceptait toutes les décisions et dont on répétait tous les discours. Nous voulons à tout prix l'unité de la classe ouvrière. Se constituer comme sujet politique, c'était s'en remettre à des porte paroles par l'intermédiaire desquels la classe ouvrière existait en tant que groupe constitué, en tant que classe consciente d'elle-même. C'est un ouvrier que je viens à vous parler, à vous, ouvriers, parce que nous pouvons nous comprendre Il y a des choses que ceux qui n'ont jamais été de la classe ouvrière ne peuvent pas comprendre. Vous de manifestation par la délégation à des responsables politiques dont on acceptait. Yeah, there has been a little bit of repetition in the last part. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like this part also because of the mixing of. Um, of color and black and white, but at the same time, he's saying we are, as you said, we understand who is talking in the, in the film, and 
what is the point of view of, I mean, uh, the, the region of the images. Um, I would like to ask the producer that I know, I mean, I, we know that to work with this material can be um, well, very pricey on one side and uh, on another side, uh, long research, long in time. And if you can tell us a little bit how you as a producer, you approach the project and what has been uh, for you the biggest challenges in, in terms of financing and also in terms of uh, clearances of rights. Si. I can tell you, but in French, because my English is very bad, so sorry. <laughs> Maybe Jean-Gabriel, make the translate. Make the translate. Or maybe I try to speak English, just for, yes. <laughs> for laughing. <laughs> no, no. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'enjeu, l'enjeu, l'enjeu de... C'est la première fois, d'abord, it's the first time for me, uh, produit produire des films en archives, c'est la, la première fois que ça m'arrive, donc c'était une expérience nouvelle. C'est la première fois qu'elle produit un film avec archives, donc c'était une nouvelle expérience. Mais comme lui, il a beaucoup, beaucoup d'expérience, c'est plutôt lui qui, <rire> qui m'a guidée un peu <rire> et qui m'a rassurée tout au long, parce que c'est vrai que je m'inquiétais beaucoup sur le prix des choses, la durée et les droits. Et je suis quand même assez d'expérience avec les archives, donc je... She uh, waited for me to make her more confident about the, the time of the work, the prices, and uh, about the clearancing. I make her more confident into that, even if she was uh, not, not so much confident about it. On a, on a travaillé aussi beaucoup avec une, une personne qui travaillait avec Jean Gabriel depuis toujours, qui s'appelle Emmanuel Kooning, qui s'occupait. De, 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 de la recherche d'archives, mais aussi du clearage des de la clearance des droits, etc. Donc ça facilite beaucoup de choses. Uh, we work with Emmanuel Koenig, my researcher. That is, um, is our job to, to research uh, archival material, but also the right to deal the right and the clearance and, and everything regarding yeah, uh, the, the production part of the archive work. On, on a produit ce film avec Arte. Euh, donc il nous a totalement fait confiance pour, pour euh, la production du film donc on a clairé les droits pour la télévision parce que c'est avant tout d'abord un film de télévision qui va sortir en salle donc, voilà. uh, We work with uh, Arte since the beginning uh, and so we first deal uh, the, the right for TV broadcasting and uh, after we had to deal the right for cinema released uh, because the film will be released after the broadcasting et maintenant, l'autre étape, c'est qu'on est à Cannes, à la, à la quinzaine des réalisateurs. Donc maintenant, on a aussi un distributeur français, mais aussi un vendeur international. Donc maintenant, toute la grande question, c'est selon les territoires où le film va être vendu. Voilà, il faut clearer les... les c'est très particulier, mais il faut clearer les droits sur, 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 sur les territoires vendus. Quoi. And the new step with Cannes is to open the film to the international market with the sales agent. And uh, the game that is tricky with archives, it's we have to deal archive by territories and up to uh, the owner right of each archive. It's not the same rules for each of them. So it's some kind of puzzles that need to be reset every time we sell a territory. Et, et, et sinon, au niveau du budget, c'est un, un, un film à, à, à petit budget, plutôt petit budget même par rapport à, à une jeunesse allemande. Voilà, c'est un film de 1h22 qui, 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 où il y a la participation d'Arte et, et, et une aide du CNC. Et je crois qu'en qu tout, on a eu quelque, quelque chose comme un peu plus de 200 000 euros pour faire le film. Donc c'est vraiment tout petit, mais on s'en est bien sorti. C'est un budget très low. Budget. Uh, with Arte, we get a small support from the CNC. And at the end, we had 200 000 uh, euros. That is really low, but we succeed to make it. And very good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, for me, it's very interesting, and I personally did a new about the question of the right clearance on an international level. Uh, and what is the most uh, complicated part, the, the, the fiction films, I guess, the, the extracts of fiction films, or also the newsreel and... Uh... Yes, the fiction film, but, but also uh, with uh, uh, Lina, <laughs> Lina Wright, uh, ça coûte cher selon qu'on prenne les droits européens ou les droits en Asie ou aux états unis le, le prix change donc c est, c est, et, et en plus oui c'est vrai que Jean-Gabriel a diversifié les supports 
de télévision, cinéma et euh, même documentaire d'auteur. Euh, mais ce qui coûte cher, non, c est, c est, je pense que c'est l'INA. Et oui, sur, sur les, les fictions de la première partie du film aussi qui coûtent assez cher. What is the most costly is uh, for sure fiction films, but it's uh, also the newsreel by INA uh, in France, that is the national, um, uh, Institut National de l'Audiovisuel, uh, who is an institution in France, who is, we kept the, uh, archive, the archives and uh, the right uh, clearance of all the TV uh, broadcasting, the national uh, TV broadcasting since the beginning of the TV stations. So uh, there it's really expensive and for sure you have to pay uh, the price, it, ch it change uh, up to the lands you buy the right and for each territory but also each way to uh, present the film, so TV station, um, cinema released and internet and as soon as you start to add territories, time and um, not support, but way to present the film, it's more and more uh, costly and really expensive at the end. So it's not so much about the genre of the film, but it's about each on a right and institution. If there are questions. When you look at the film now that it's completed and you see it, um, you know, you've made it as an archive film, what do you feel um, the particular qualities that you bring to the subject by using archive of, uh, 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 as opposed to of making in, in uh, any other number of other ways which you could have done? What is special about the archive for you, uh, for the subject? For me, the, the, the one of the quality um, of to use pre-existing film, it's uh, that you can, when you are uh, going to the past, people in the films made in whatever the period, they are talking in the present time. So there, for this film, for example, where it's a lot of uh, worker uh, that talk, that make testimonies for different kinds of films, but we can hear them in the present time. It's, there is no more, it was like that at this time. We can feel the time, feel it um, without, I don't know, without, we don't have no more references of what is the past or the present. It's something more agey. So it, it's, for me, I, li I like um, that because it's, yeah, it's something, the, 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 the quality of the time, of where we are in the, during a timeline, it's really different. When we can uh, hear someone from the 60s and we can feel it's, it's someone that could be interviewed in live now, with, it's, it's no more the past and it's, for sure it's no more, it's not the present, but it's something in between that is, for me, really interesting with using pre-existing film. It's a, yeah, it's a way to, to put us as an audience in something that is just going, uh, like in a fiction film, you're just following the time and you don't, it's no, no more the, only the past. Uh, yeah, my question is more about um, the link with the book because I really love this book, so I'm interested about how you have chosen, you were saying that you have chosen the point of view of the mother to tell the story about the mother, although there are so many different stories in the same story, so why and how have you made this choice? Yeah, so, so for, for the one who don't know the, the, the book, the book is really like a kaleidoscope, which always jump from one character, the author, his mother, and the father. Um, so we jump from one to the other, and in different um, times. It, it could be uh, with the grandmother and uh, we go back to uh, the author today and we go back to the 60s and uh, there is a lot of themes that just like go and come back and so uh, that is, it's, the book is really uh, well written but it's in impossible for a film of one hour and a half to have all these like, the way so rich to, to jump from one uh, topic to the other and one time to the other so I wanted to make some more clear line so uh, it was to create a, a line was to put everything in order in terms of chronology and to reduce the number of characters. So I decided to skip the author of the book uh, 
and to focus on, on the mother and that there is in one hand because what I wanted to share from this book uh, to an audience by a film was more the story of the working class and no not the story of the ones that succeed to escape so this working class and uh, uh, on the other hand it's because at the end when we accept this kind of uh, challenge to adapt such a film it's because it's related to his own story my own story and my, um, I have the same kind of family than uh, Ribon, so I wanted to make a film from where I'm coming from, more than a film that about where I am me uh, today. And I think to focus on the woman, it's more because simply because in my family, it's, it's ma mainly a female family. I have like one uncle and seven uh, aunt. You know, it's, it's, a fam it's a female family. So probably everything in the book linked to the story of the, 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 the woman in this class moved me more than the main uh, stories. Mm. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. Um. Yeah, and that's true. That one of the problem with the family is that the man doesn't talk as much with, mm. and is not really linked to his family. But yeah, uh, did you Ribon, have seen the film or not? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was impossible to not, not share yeah. the process even before the film. The, even my choice yeah. uh, of the, within his text is, is so like, yeah, it, uh, it's radical, not radical, but it's really like a clear choices, a choice, and I wanted him to uh, accept before I st even start the film. Maybe we can play the second. Uh, clip from the film. Mon grand-père me raconta un jour qu'alors qu'il circulait boulevard Saint-Germain à 5 heures du matin pour se rendre à son travail, des bourgeois avinés, sortant d'une soirée ou d'une boîte de nuit, lui avaient crié « Salaud de pauvre !» Quand mon grand-père parlait de lutte des classes, cela avait un sens très concret pour lui. Il était communiste, comme les bourgeois sont de droite. Cela lui paraissait naturel, comme un élément de l'appartenance de classe reçu à la naissance avec le patrimoine génétique. Comme mon père, il commençait souvent ses phrases par nous, les ouvriers. L'un des nôtres, les nôtres, les nôtres vont au travail. D'autres travaillent beaucoup moins, mais mangent beaucoup plus. À l'heure où pour les uns le labeur de jour commence, D'autres viennent se reposer enfin des fatigues de la nuit. C'est que l'hôtel particulier leur appartient. L'usine aussi leur appartient. Les mains noires de nos trieuses paient les manucures des toutous de ces dames. Pourquoi ne souris-tu pas, mon gars Vois comme on s'amuse. Rose, champagne, le repas, 11 000 francs par tête. 11 000 francs c'est ce que gagne par quinzaine Henri Renard Manœuvre. Lucienne Alric Bobineuse, 8 500 francs par quinzaine. Au plus profond de ta détresse, tu n'es pas seul. Le ciel est sombre, l'avenir t'apparaît noir, la vie te semble sans espoir. Camarade, reprends courage, tu n'es pas seul. Paysan, ouvrier, chômeur, jeunes gens et jeunes filles, fils fille du, du peuple. peuple. Amis, camarades, le parti communiste vous appelle. Uh, I observed this some specific that is very common for today. Uh, documentary it's a lot of uh, background talking it's been that uh, voiceover I, I saw here in Cannes free movies where uh, it's full talking uh, you know no one second without talking I think that if the um, uh, image itself does not uh, tell the story uh, uh, if you have such voiceover it uh, seems more like radio theater than a movie 
so I would like to ask, uh, is it possible to escape this uh, already new uh, mode, new perversion, I say, because mo uh, cinema is a picture um, art, not uh, the talk is secondary. Uh. Uh, yes and no. It's my, I did like 20 or 30, uh, 20 uh, short movie with archival material and it's my third film, no, second feature film with archives and it's the first one I use a voiceover. And it's not like a new way to be into some kind of mood. The voiceover, as you say, was a voiceover, and for me it's not new. It's since the beginning of archiving of, of documentaries, the voiceover is one way to use, to make films, and it's not at all new. And for me, usually, I, 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 for my own work, I don't like to use voiceover, and I never use voiceover. It's, it's the first time. But because there is, for this film, uh, something important, it's an adaptation of a book. And what we decide is to adapt a book, not to question, uh, like in my other film, like other kind of topic, the idea was to give to the audience to hear the text itself and what is the film. And you didn't see the film yet, you saw two excerpts. So, hmm? a lot of talk. yeah, a lot of talk, yeah. But I invite you to see the film, there is not, it's really a lot, uh, for sure it's a talkative film, but it's not only talkative, all the end of the film, there is no more voiceover, voiceover, and um, let's say that anyway, uh, it's complicated always to, even myself, I try as an audience to not like say, um, this kind of way to use a tool of the cinematography, it's no more relevant or we, we should whatever believe because there is always exception. And I can't say it for myself because it's my film, but there are in, in the story of the film, some films based on voiceovers that are like just amazing. So it's, it's stupid to say we can't use voiceover or that it's like, it's like a new trend that it's quite, and for someone like me that is, I really believe of the power of images of archive film with a voice. It's strange to have to answer. Um, I would like to ask you about, uh, talking about uh, the voice of the film, uh, how you work with Adèle Enel. Uh, her voice is, uh, I guess, for a French audience in particular, but also internationally, it's very, uh, it's very reconnaissable. Re reconnaissable. And uh, I think she's, in a way, adding uh, to the film a level of, um, how can I say, um, materic, materic layer. It's uh, all the work on the sound, uh, it's really adding uh, something. Uh, and I think that the way in which she's reading the text, uh, it's uh, very sober, but at the same time, it's uh, like, it, it really puts the spectator in, inside the images even more. And how did you work with her? Uh, on the reading, if she was participating on different stages of uh, the editing, and what, how was your collaboration together? No, she didn't work on, on the film before the recording of the voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and we even sometimes discussed on the text itself, but I was quite um, tough. On the <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's this kind of text, we, it's impossible to be 100% like, uh, agree on, on, on such text. We can always like discuss some part of it. So. But I, uh, my, my, my own rule was to not change the okay. text uh, at all. Um, so we discussed a lot about it, but it was nothing like, it didn't uh, have an impact of the way uh, we work uh, later on on the film. It was really great for me to work with Adele because it was my first voiceover. And to record, it's some kind of techniques that is, was really new and complicated. It's complicated to, it was complicated at least for me. And um, she was really great because, she, in a way, I was like uh, perhaps polite. Mm -hmm. So she she was the like one, the yeah, but not not so much in the work. For me, it was like uh, because it's really tiring and it's really complicated. She was really involved into it, and we can feel it that she, she, sometimes she's she sounds soft, but we can feel something that is, she was really nervous. Um, and uh, she once simply says that what we did was really bad, so we needed to do it again. Okay. <laughs> and for me, it would be impossible to say like, oh, perhaps we can do it 
yeah. you know, because that I was not the one to really direct it there. I was, I did not have, no, I, I will do it differently and I, and I know how to do it, but because of her. Um, your next project also, Facing Darkness, uh, that Madeleine was, uh, uh, was quoting at the beginning uh, of the presentation, uh, it's also based uh, on archive material, but I think there is in the film, uh, I would like you to talk about it, but just to say that it's, a, it's a different case in specific because uh, then you, you are showing images and then you are uh, putting those images in front of the people who make them. Uh, so the, the dialect of the film, the dialectic of the film, is going to be completely different. Um, and how does it change this for you in your way of talking to have archival material, to have the archive on the side and the maker of the archive together? Yes. Yeah, so so to, to go fast into the film, it will be a two-part film. Uh, the first one will be a montage, 100% montage film, uh, with material, um, essay of film made by truly young filmmaker from Sarajevo that were like in between 80 and 20 uh, something years old at the beginning of the siege. So most of them have to go to the front line or to deal to the army uh, obligation. And we start, we start or we continue to film, to film with uh, uh, often amateur small camera and they, sometimes it's just like documentation of their everyday life, sometimes it's small film and it's, so it, this part will be uh, only with that. And the second part, I will interview them today, uh, not them, but few of them. Uh, and we will come back to what mean to take a gun, possibly what mean to kill when you need to defend yourself and what is the meaning to make images in the same time. And it's the first time I, because I question a lot what is it about ma to make film. And, and, but it's the first time I need to, probably because they are alive, simply, that it was not the case of, for example, a German news. But can, can they ex explain me or us what was the meaning for them of doing that in such time? So I, I, yeah, that is the idea to, yeah, to, to simply to, to be able to, to use um, their answer and not only what they produce because it's not enough, uh, there is not enough information to, to have some kind of answer mm -hmm. of why the, the film are amazing, but they are not enough to, I wanted at least me to, to understand how they do those material and why. And Cecile, you are, you are accompanying uh, Jean Gabriel in this adventure and is a, a film that, of course, uh, it's like, it's, it's a film that is going to be co-produced by different countries. And how it is uh, for, a, for a producer, but also for a director to go and present a project like this to an international audience and to, how, to, how it is in general to present to the industry the work with archive, uh, how it is? Um, I don't know if it's, if the, big matter of it, if it would be the archival material. It's, for me, it's more the look of the author, what Jean-Gabriel wants to do about this story, about the material he found, and how he wants, he will connect it to the present time and to what I think now, to what it was for them. And so it is not properly about the to me, it's not the, the big deal about it. And the footages are so strong, so then when you show even part of them, I think it's quite convincing, or it gives, uh, yeah, w what we experience in Vision du Réel was ki uh, qu quite a big interest from even from TVs and, and from all, yeah, different kind of partners. So, yeah, I felt, so, and the big thing also is that, that Jean Gabriel has done many films before, that a German news in Jeunesse Allemande is quite famous, I mean, um, especially among the, yeah, quite a lot of the professionals. And so, yeah, people know what, how he can deal with them, and it's not a typical way to do it, I think. It's a very sensitive way. We'll see it in uh, Rotoirens tomorrow. But it's, yeah, it's, so this w specific way uh, that he's doing it, that makes the specific of the project. And yeah, we have quite um, strong interest and we are going further on, on the development and the project. 
Do you already know more or less when we will be able to see the film finished? Next year. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have one last question that is um, beyond the films. Uh, we beyond, beyond the films, your films, but also uh, beyond Retourne Arance and Facing Darkness. Uh, what has been for you that you have so such a long experience in working with archival and in working with the newsreel and uh, what the, for in in journalistic term of you how how did the language change for you did you notice uh, differences in 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 the chronicle in the way of the in, in the way of the news of presenting events in the images i know this is a big big subject but i think that this in for example in retour arans it's particularly visible the way in which the newsreel were presented and the way in which the, the images of the last pass were presented, the grammar of the images mm. different, the, the, the way of shoot and frame is it's changing. Yeah, but it was the same in France and it was in Germany when I was working on the German news that I, I realized that at the end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s, every, everything changed on the TV. Uh, the way uh, the language changed, but it's, everything is linked to the story of the techniques when the video arrived. Because before, to film outside for the TV station was in 16 millimeter. And so the grammar is different in, in print than it, it, it is in video when it's cheap and easy to go alone and to film something. And even in the studio, um, in a way, everything like the rhythm changed really in few years. We, we jump from so, so one kind of um, a radio talk show where pe intellectual politicians have like one hour land long discussion without like advertising, uh, sketch or whatsoever to something really like fast and it's, it's just even in five, uh, almost like one decade everything changed in the 80s uh, but it's really um, first of all it's linked with uh, when the video arrived that changed everything and it, it's become really like dirty in, in terms of filmmaking. There was no more filmmaking in TV station and something changed politically. We jumped from like old um, capitalism to new kind of capitalism and new way to use media. And even almost a lot of TV stations were privati privatized. Mm -hmm. Everything just uh, happened in the 80s. Yeah, once again, I think this is very visible in uh yeah, it's yeah, in German it's, it's really like, yeah. in terms of quality, the film is really like amazing. The images, even from the TV, are really amazing. And we jump in some kind of dirty pixel stuff in the 80s. And it's like, oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like terrible. But it's a story of the techniques when you, you work with such uh, material and, and this kind of uh, square, time square, and you jump from the 60s, 70s to the 80s, you, um, but we can say even the same thing uh, about the documentary when we, d we start to make documentary on the with DV in the 90s. <laughs> it's, it's impossible to watch from today because the quality is too poor. It's, it's, it's really like hurting yeah. our eyes now. Je voudrais vous remercier et remercier aussi les personnes qui nous ont suivis en ligne. I would like to thank everybody for being here and also for the people that have been watching and listening to us. This that will become an archive also. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marie-Ange. Thank you very much, Jean-Gabriel. Thank you very much, Cécile. Thank you.